so often, I think, I think, I think the answer probably is somewhere around the Tower of Babel, right? Like, <laughs> um, it's something that we have built to to assure that we're going to be okay, whether it's religion or 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 governmental systems, and and void we're gonna, of the, we're going to be okay because of our system that we've built. We're going to build this tower. Yeah. And uh, and it's going to get us to the heavens. And but, but this, unfortunately, we have to control people uh, in order for the tower to work, so that we can feel safe. And so you need to get in line and whatever make make the bricks. A parallel between Babel and Babylon, and you, know, you mentioned the Book of Revelation earlier. And Babylon seems to be the system that yes. tries to control and suppress people, particularly people that want uh, to uh, rely on God um, for their freedom. And it seems 100%. like it's a freedom issue. How am I going to be free? I've created a system that produces freedom, but the ends do not justify the means. I have to oppress you in order for me to, for me to be free. I have, I have to make you a slave. And God's like, oh no, oh no, I'm the I'm the God who frees. And uh, it's isn't it interesting that people are seeing? It's almost like uh, people don't know it, but they're ra they're railing against Babel or Babylon. And uh, and uh, and there's this weird sense of hope that there's something else out there that will that will rescue me, you know, come and yeah. rescue me, or have mercy on me, and uh, and and they're probably tapping into the spirit. The groan, they're groaning, and the spirit's groaning, and 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 something will come of this. Did you ever get into Paramore at all? Uh, give me give me a touch point. Um, she has a song called uh, "You You Are the Only Exception." And it's about, she talks about her dad cursing at the wind. And uh, it's, I'm not going to sing about love if it doesn't exist. And then she says, but you, you are the only exception and I'm on my way to believing. Yeah. And it's similar because it's, it's uh, probably singing to a guy and I feel sad for her because the guy's going to let her down. Like she might find out that, <laughs> that he's not really the exception, that he's another flawed human. But if she's singing it to God, then there is a, a reason for hope, but Hundred percent. I love that, and I think the the one of the questions like that that I turn over in that is is our God big enough, even if she is singing it to a guy, to come <laughs> into it and inhabit yeah. those lyrics? And it, yeah. Well, for me, she did because I I felt the spirit. I it, I start getting all weepy, uh, which is interesting. How you know she's probably singing it about some guy, but uh, 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 some somebody told me recently. Uh, we we're talking about U2 and Bono, and I don't know. You probably know better than I do. Uh, they told me that uh, that uh, the Edge and Bono uh, thought about not doing music, like they were getting started, and, and they're both part of the same church community, and that they uh, were like, "We don't want to go out and do music because it'll take us away from our community here." Um, but that the ch his their church said, "No, you need to go out and do this." Uh, yeah, so actually it was the opposite of that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just finished not that long ago um, Songs of Surrender, which is Bono's memoir. And uh, yeah, so so they're young. They're like, you know, 19, 20, maybe 18, 17 years. They're, they're young, right? Um, they form the band and they are, they're the three of them. So Bono, The Edge, and um, Larry Mullen Jr., the drummer. They're all part of this community. Adam Clayton, the bassist, is, um, you know, it's not. He's just, you know, he's just rock and roll um, at that point. And yeah. And so they start they start having success. They start they start, you know, they start this thing starts building and starts growing. The the leaders of the community of faith were concerned about it, taking them away from God, taking them away from what what was happening. So they sort of like. You know, I it felt like there was some sort of a call to let this go and focus on focus on the community of faith, focus on the church. And so, yeah, the edge actually had an existential crisis and quit the band for a week. And oh. was like, yeah, I don't you know, I don't I don't want to do this if this is uh, moving away from God, moving away from Jesus. And uh, and Bono and him like seems like they had a, you know, had a meeting, had a prayer meeting and wrestled through it and decided that actually God might actually be at work in 
the emergence of U2, the band. And I've thought a lot that, about that a lot recently in the context of what we're talking about, you know, like just that spirit of religion kind of thing. And I'm mm-hmm. sure, I'm sure the leaders of their faith, of their community of faith were well-intentioned, right? I'm sure they weren't trying to be, um, but well, I thought yeah, about- you, you, you could see, it's like, if you, if you become famous and become a rock star, you will lose your soul. You're going to lose your soul. Yeah. I mean, like there's plenty of evidence to suggest that is absolutely yeah. the it'll case, sex, right? It'll be sex and drugs. Yeah. How many, I would say millions of people has Bono and the edge and the rest of the band led in worship in giant arenas. I mean, like, you know, when they were, when they, you know, in the, in the boy and the war album era, like, you know, and they still like I I I the, I've been to two of their concerts, and in one of them they did forty, which is the fortieth song. Mm-hmm. Um, and I waited patiently on the Lord, and He climbed and heard my cry, lift me up out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and I will sing a new song. Would that have happened? Like Bono's yeah. Bono's story is interesting because um, I'm going to probably mess it up, but you know his his. One of his parents was Catholic and one of his parents was uh-huh. Protestant. And at this point in, in Bono's life, his mom has died, right? Like his mom died when he's like 14. Uh-huh. Um, and so it's him and his older brother and his dad living at home. It's almost like uh, the spirit uh, driving Jesus into the wilderness and he has to face the devil. And that's part of what I'm sure that's part of what Bono had had to do. Um, what What's the most uh, impactful U2 uh, song in their entire history from your perspective? That's impossible. <laughs> That's an impossible question. <laughs>